Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly, and even now while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Proverbs. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hand to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes coverings. Her fine clothing is linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, 
and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish, For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum. And when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way they had argued with one another, Who was the greatest? He sat down and called the twelve and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them. And taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. I whispered to Josh on my way up, that's a long walk, I'm coming. <laughs> um, if we, I, I think we have some newcomers here. My name is Sarah Condon and um, I'm married to Josh, but I'm also ordained, so they don't just let anybody get up here in case you're worried. <laughs> um, why don't we pray together? Gracious and loving God, Thank you for being the first and for being the last in our place. Help us to know that our truest identity is in you. We pray for the one who preaches, Lord, for you know her sins are many. Amen. In 1948, the anthropologist William Bascom published an account of a status game on the Micronesian island of Pohnpei that was played with yams. The man with the largest yam at the feast would be declared number one and praised by the chief for his generosity. The men of Pohnpei would furiously compete for this position, raising around 50 yams a year in secret, remote, overgrown plots that they'd creep out of bed at two in the morning to tend to. A single yam could take 10 years to grow and reach more than four meters in length. It could require 12 men to carry into the feast on a stretcher. I believe it is safe to say that the male population of Pohnpei suffered from what can only be called yam envy. <laughs> in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus has just shared with his disciples the whole story the capital S story, because his story is, is about more than healings, more than crossing cultural divisions. Um, the story of Jesus is about more than even the love of neighbor. The story of Jesus Christ is one of betrayal, death, and resurrection for you and for me. And you can really hear a pin drop at this moment in the text. The gospel tells us that the disciples did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. And so instead of asking Jesus what he meant, instead of facing questions about sin and death and redemption, the disciples decided to play their own game of yam envy right? Because who doesn't love a distraction? When I read this gospel, I imagine that the disciples got really quiet, um, that they kind of began to walk a little more slowly so that Jesus would walk ahead. 
Um, I've seen teenagers do this with their parents before so they can talk about whatever they want, right? And they began to talk about who was the greatest among them. Now, I do want to say there's a tremendous amount of research that tells us that this is a very normal human conversation. Little kids have this conversation early. It's often as early as three or four that they begin to talk about whose dad is the strongest, right? Um, sometimes, as a young-ish mother in suburbia, I often think that I'm in competition with other young mothers in suburbia to see who can be on the weirdest diet, right? You cut carbs, I cut sugar, you cut sugar, I don't even eat solid food, right? <laughs> Y'all know. Personally, and this is a very much an admission of my own sin, I have become aware that my first reaction, my gut reaction, whenever anybody I know, anybody I know, gets a job, gets a new job, a job promotion, any kind of a job, my gut reaction is to wonder why I did not get that job instead of them. And this could be any job, jobs I am not qualified for, jobs I do not have an education for. It could be somebody is the dean of a cathedral in small town England. It could be manager of Pizza Hut, and I will wonder why they did not call me. That is my gut sin response. So I take comfort, and I hope you take comfort, in this ridiculous conversation the disciples are having with Jesus. And I see brothers in need of Jesus when I think about the great yam competitors on the island of Pohnpei. It turns out we are all obsessed with who is the greatest. That sin crosses gender, age, class, culture, and even time. But Jesus, like a quiet storm, enters into their conversation, enters into our conversation, and begins to explain to the disciples what it really means to be first and to be last. He says, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. Jesus is talking about himself here. He is echoing the first part of the gospel back to the disciples. His suffering, his death, and his resurrection are actually what it takes to be the greatest. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And not only can we mere mortals not join Jesus on this messianic journey to the cross, I am certain none of us would want to, right? I certainly do not want to hang on a cross for the sins of the world, and I'm certain you do not either. You see, these two parts of the gospel may feel different, but they really are so intertwined. The disciples ignored Jesus. They ignored him when he spoke about what the future would hold for him. Because of what it meant for the disciples, they ignored him. Jesus was supposed to be their next king, right? So they were su supposed to figure out who was going to be Secretary of State, right? Who's going to run his Department of Defense? That's the conversation they're having. And instead, Jesus shows up and he says, hey, I'm going to die. That's what's actually going to happen. Well, no thank you, right? That's what the disciples said. No, thank you, Jesus. We would prefer to talk about our own greatness. We would prefer to focus on our status in the world. Have you seen, Jesus, how big our yams are? I almost didn't say that, but... Here is the problem with this whole situation. If we ignore our need of God's salvation then we have only one choice. And that choice is to self-justify. And that, brothers and sisters, is the way of death. It is an endless cycle 
of running to catch up, of trying to be the best, the most moral, the most righteous, the most qualified, even the most humble. Because I, I have to say that Jesus does not want us to hear this gospel and to think, well, in order to be first, I have to be last, which means I, I have to be the most humble, right? We have to stop drawing near to our best impersonation of Jesus, right? We're not called to impersonate Jesus. And we have to start recognizing how near Jesus is to us already. This child he brings in at the end of the gospel is really the key, the key to the whole gospel. Now, I do want to say in this modern era, we have a kind of magical thinking about children. Children are so insightful and innocent and pure, um, which when I hear these claims, even in 2021, I think clearly you don't know children. But anyway, this is, this is in the zeitgeist, right? Children are tiny sort of spiritual beings sometimes in our brains. But it is a very modern construct. Jesus does not pull this child into his arms because this kid is a portrait of innocence. He pulls this child towards him because at that point in time, children offered nothing. They offered nothing. They were not cute. No one took videos of them. No one asked them what they wanted to be when they grew up because there was a pretty big assumption a lot of them weren't going to grow up. They offered absolutely nothing. They held little value. And this child, this child that Jesus pulls in, he's like, this child is wandering around. This child appears to belong to no one, the least of the least, except this child, who offered nothing, clearly belonged to Jesus. And we, with our distracting games of status and seeking self-righteousness, we are so much the same as this child, and it would serve us to see that. Friends, please never forget that Jesus is near to you. God is closer to us than our very breath. So step off the wheel of endless tasks, of status keeping, of fighting over who we think we are better or more qualified than. Step away from that drudgery for, for just a moment. And I say that because you're going to do it again. I'm going to do it again. Tell me about your job promotion after church, and my initial thought will be, I should have gotten that job, right? Like, we will do it again. I always want to say that when we talk about stepping back and giving ourselves a moment, we have to recognize that we're going to go back to the sin. We all do. And God, through Jesus Christ, forgives us for even that. But for a moment, just for a moment, Fall onto the mercy of God. Feel the freedom of you bringing nothing and being held like a child by Jesus. When we approach this cross and this altar for communion, it's such a beautiful symbol of this, this moment that we have. Because we offer our empty hands out. We offer nothing. We offer our empty hands out for the body of Christ. We have nothing, and we are given everything. The glorious redemption of Jesus, all at once. Amen. Let us stand and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God from the Father, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, in being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for doctors, nurses, and those who care for the sick. Sanctify, O oh Lord, those whom you have called to the study and practice of the arts of healing and to the prevention of disease and pain. Strengthen them by your life-giving spirit that by their ministries, the health of the community may be promoted and your creation glorified. We pray for those who are ill. Lord Jesus Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom. We commend to your loving care all those who suffer from any illness or disease. Relieve their pain, guard them against all danger, and restore to them your gifts of gladness and strength, and raise them up to a life of service to you. Further, we pray for our armed forces police, firefighters, and EMTs. Defend and strengthen them, give them courage, and grant them a sense of your abiding presence, wherever they may be.
the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight and walk in to the glory of your name. Forgive you for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Josh Condon. I'm the rector here at Holy Spirit Episcopal Church and School. It is a blessing and joy to gather with you all this morning. I pray that God is with you and will make God's own presence known to you not only this morning, but as you go forth from this place as well. I have just a few announcements to share with you. The first is to thank Sarah for being our guest preacher this morning. Um, I feel like that yam thing was a little close to home, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to share just a few things coming up. Our blessing of the animal service is coming up on the first Sunday of October. As it always does, we will be gathering on the field at 3 p.m. Bring your animals, bring your stuffed animals, so we will have a Eucharist outside, and it will be a glorious day. So I hope you will join us for the blessing of the animals on October 3rd. We also have um, a couple of events coming up, 10 Great Dates, uh, which is a, a moment where we gather here and uh, you get ready and you, uh, we have a, a conversation and then you go and you have a date with uh, your loved one. Uh, and if you have children, we will feed them and take care of them for you. Uh, that is tentatively scheduled, as is our first Parents of Little Ones uh, gathering of the fall as well. Uh, when we hit November, for All Saints Day on November 7th, we will have our first uh, field church of the season so we will start our 3 p.m. services on November 7th and we'll have them every week uh, throughout the program year um, and the, the last thing I wanted to mention about what's uh, happening right now is that we continue to invite you to bring food for our blessings in a backpack program our food focus for September is individually packaged oatmeal and so Really, you can't buy individual packages of oatmeal. You need to go buy a big box of individually packaged oatmeal so that when you come in, you can put that big box of individually packaged oatmeal in the white box that will be full of boxes of... Yes, thank you, individually packaged oatmeal. Yes, thank you. Please help us feed our kiddos that individually packaged oatmeal. will end up in a bag in a child's backpack going home on a Friday afternoon and they will wake up Saturday and while they may not think of you by face or name they will be grateful for your ministry so please help us feed our kids um, the last thing I want to say is to uh, those of you who are online uh, welcome we are uh, I'm, I'm inviting uh, any of you who would like to be an online greeter into a new ministry that we are starting so if you are with us virtually we would love it if you would uh, reach out to me and let me know if you'd be interested it's not very complicated, and it is just a way for us to welcome all those who gather with us uh, who don't gather with us in person. So I hope you will, uh, I'm not sure which camera to look at, but I hope you will uh, consider, uh, that's why I'm like, my, my, my eyes are going everywhere. But um, I hope you'll consider joining us uh, in that ministry and offer yourself to that pretty uh, simple but very important way that we welcome others into uh, this community. It is such a blessing to have you all with us. Uh, God bless you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is get shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with the gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.